Very advanced for that. So, um, here's an old hair. Jonathan O'Hara, $298.87. We got two chips in this one. Small claims, $338.71 and $381.89. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank So for the monthly amount, I don't think I gave you an answer. I'll get it back. <laughs> Hi, everybody. All right. So uh, in this monthly report for July slash August operations, uh, we had uh, one open due to Zach leaving. He was a flight medic. He went to a flight full time. Uh, so I left the uh, open captain position. Randy Salida, who's been here 11 years, um, who recently just came back full time, promoted her. She lives here in town. Uh, she'll be thinking for her, thinking for the education uh, aspect as well as uh, uh, anytime there's like a audit review, she's going to be helping out with that. Personnel still the same. We're still short five full time paramedics. Uh, as of Saturday, I did not include them here. One uh, EMT resigned due to uh, his full-time jobs are now taking over, so he doesn't have any time here. Um, that's been turned in upstairs. Training, there's several classes coming up. We just put on uh, two, EM, two uh, first aid classes for JW picks. We have a countywide uh, fire department training for EMRs to uh, have more first responders in the communities. Uh, I will be teaching that class through Hamlet Fire. Um, there's also two other, three other advanced classes coming up. One through Franciscan being held at the community building, uh, free of charge to us. They had a free grant they got. Uh, they thought of us, reached out. There's 18 openings for paramedics. Right now we have 12 filled. Um, and that's uh, October as well as two advanced classes all around that one. Safety, uh, the guy that was injured on the back, uh, with the back injury, is now back to work. So there's no uh, injuries reported this time. Vehicles, uh, 3308, the North Judson uh, ambulance. That one uh, got two new tires. Uh, also just got one as of uh, 
the other day it had a blowout on the side, right rear. Uh, so that one got replaced. Oil change in the coil pack again. That's the second one this year. Don't know what's happening there. Uh, 4230, which is uh, Medic 3, Knox Base. It has two new front tires and oil change. Just normal routine. 514, that's normally Medic 5, which is Probotown Base. That one has two new front tires as well. I actually need the shocks, they said. Um, power steering hose is uh, the power steering flow is dri dripping on the, uh, the base floor. Uh, so we got it here. And also, windshield washer, the reservoir was cracked. So anytime you operated it, it would leak. Um, the other three trucks, uh, no issues. Uh, 4149, which is the main vehicle. That one actually had an oil change, just standard routine. Base maintenance, uh, I put it in there just so everybody knows that clothes washer is leaking. Don't know why, but we're working on that. Uh, North Justin Base, can't make it up. Someone backed into the door. They hit the button, thought it was going up the back end. Must have double clicked it back in the, the bottom panel. When I got there, uh, it was actually stuck in the up position, off and everything. Called DC Garage, it came out. I had to do an immediate repair just to get it to open and close. Uh, that's been handled. They To replace the panel, the next panel and parts and everything, it's $1,600. I did not. Okay. The door open and closes, just not pretty right now. I can live with that for now. Um, uh, PPE, there's no change. Uh, other than that, that's it for EMS. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, currently, we're still at 15 full time drivers. So we're one driver uh, open. Uh, we do have a employee supposedly going to retire in October. So we're still looking to get more drivers. Um, <clears throat> the grant status for community crossings. Um, 22 dash one. Um, we opened up the bids in July. We're waiting for the notice to proceed from end out. And when we get that, we're hopefully going to get this project done yet this year. Um, community crossing 22 dash two. Um, I have a commitment letter today um, that we need to sign for. Um, our portion of the project is going to be 83,000. Um, community crossings portion is going to be 250,522. Uh, this project came in at a total cost of 397,856. That's our what our spec is. Um, so it's 63,000 over. Uh, we'll have to cover that expense. Hopefully, the bids will come in a little lower than that. At the most, it should be 63,000. And this is underneath south of what was done last year? Correct. From the Robbins Ditch down to Highway 30. Then 600 East will be all hot, mixed asphalt from the county line to the Highway 30. Motion on that. Motion approve the commitment letter. Present. Second. All in favor? Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
as far as um, we're still working on getting quotes on tractors and mowers, it's like pulling teeth. Um, tractors are just not out there. Mm -hmm. So um, they're slow to quote anything. Um, we purchased the uh, semi. It's down at Terry's Trucking getting a wet kit installed on it. We should have that back in about four weeks. And then we'll be able to use it with the low boy and the dump trailers. Is that outside of the one you brought us? Yes. Quotes? Okay. So you're still looking at quotes for that other one? No, that was for that truck. I got the needed quotes for it. Mm -hmm. You guys said as long as I got the quotes for it, we could go ahead and purchase it. Well, there was three different quotes for the truck yeah, we, or truck itself. So. We needed three different quotes. We needed quotes. We needed to see quotes from three different vendors before you spent more than 50 grand. Did you reach out to three different vendors? Now? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. And, and remind me again, the price was obviously was it less than 100. Yeah, yeah. like 53,000. So, we reached out to seven. You reached out to three, but only gotten a couple of quotes back. Is that what we're saying here? I had quotes on three trucks that were from the same vendor. Okay, yeah. And you said I need to get different, different vendors. Quotes. Yes. Yeah. So I got different quotes from different vendors. Oh. And then the commissioners need to approve one. Okay, I wasn't going to understand as long as I got them, no. we were okay to get that. Oh, you will can, be. I mean, you will be. You're not going to ratify yeah, this we'll, decision. Yeah, we'll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be. I'll get the quotes anyway. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you still went with the. Uh, Lowest. lowest quote. Yes. Hey, the motion, the, the retroactive, uh, the motion to retroactively approve that purchase. Second. The second. Oh, you got a question about the wet kit. Was so that included in the, the quote that you got? Yes, it was included. So we're not going to hold very trust. We're putting that on. No. Any question? I can. That was probably just had a motion and a second. <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah, just get that's that. What you spent, the quote that you actually purchased okay. to us so we can just file it. All right. Okay. Uh, the bridges um, starting in September, uh, September 12th, I have rented a crack seal machine. So we're going to go out to all the bridges and crack seal all the bridges up as part of uh, the bridge assessment program. Or assessment, that's that program. <clears throat> uh, so we're going to crack seal the bridges and then, of course, we're going to use it for county roads. Um, I have a signature, I need a signature here for bridge number seven. Uh, Proceed with United. Where you discuss this? And what is Bridge Number Seven? Yeah, the bridge has been in the works. And we're just giving the notice to proceed. So we're. Is, is an any enhancement of what we've already agreed to from, to receive from USI, right? This is, I guess I'm questioning what is so special about this that needs an extra signature. Is United providing you with uh, bridge construction inspections for this bridge? Yes. Is that what this is for? For the construction inspection is that what this bridge, okay, right? So yeah, this is really. just for the bridge construction inspections so which since we don't have a bridge construction okay. inspector right now. Okay. Well, you want to look at this before the assignment? It's, it's, like, it's pretty last well, so the end.
Okay, because all while we're waiting on them. Let's, yeah. uh, gravel road, we're continuously to work on those. Um, as far as road maintenance goes, uh, so far we've done over 15 miles of chip seal. Um, we started a second round of mixing up cold plug for wedges. Um, starting September 12th, we're going to rent a crack seal machine for four weeks. And then on August 18th, Seal Master, um, that's who we rented the uh, crack seal machine from. It's going to give us a half mile's worth of fog seal. Is that like what the state does on the highways? Yes. So when they chip seal a highway, when they're done, they come out and they seal it. And it's a black material. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to give us a half mile of fog seal to try out as a sample. I'm working with some other vendors to see if they'll match it. Um, as far as I know, we've never fog sealed and start doing it. I don't think we're going to try it. I think they might have tried it once, but I don't know if it went anywhere. Okay. The state mandates that any chip seal road on the state highway gets fog sealed. Mm -hmm. So the state believes in it. I noticed, um, I believe it's 600 miles runs past the OD school, got chip sealed. Yes. But you skipped over the trouble spot that we got a complaint on? Yes. Chip seals the plan now. Okay. Um, I'm putting a plan together for next spring. Okay. Um, I'm looking at trying to run that to community crossing. Okay. Um, because what was recommended is we grind the road up mm -hmm. and remove like six inches of dirt. Oh dear. And that road was ripped around. Mm -hmm. So um, that road needs a better base underneath. So chip sealing it. Just to help us. Okay. So um, that's going to be a that little mile section there is going to be pretty good undertaking, but we're working through. Right. Uh, uh, training, we don't have anything scheduled. I just talked to Kerry uh, before the meeting about being marking this up this fall for some training. So that's in the works. Um, solar project, Mammoth. Um, we're out there every week grading and patching potholes with 73. Uh, we just put like seven <clears throat> loads of stone on 400 East. Um, we got permission to add another five or six loads to it. Um, they're having, they're pouring concrete at the substation, which is just off of 400 East on 700 South. So they've had a few concrete trucks running through there. So we're going to add some more stone to that and build that back up. Um, today, we're out working on 800 South. Um, the trucks fell through. and It was a low spot, dips down into a marshy area. We knew that was going to be a problem. So we're out there building that road up uh, probably six to eight inches. Uh, next era. Um, there was three culverts that needed replaced. The culverts came in last week. As soon as we're done with the road work, um, we're going to replace them in September. Probably the second, third week to we get to that project. Um, Hoosier Solar, uh, we met with them August 4th to discuss varying electric lines in the county right away. Um, the highway department is not in favor of this. Um, I feel like they need to be buried outside of our right of way on their own property. Larry, can you speak to why um, we were just asking for this? Yeah, in the uh, where the fields are, there's sections of panels that are not, that are not contiguous. We have to connect those. And we have to run a cable from one to the other someplace, either we run it across a property or we run it down a road. Now, Christina, well, I met Christina, she's the lead on the project. She really preferred to run it across country. She didn't like the engineer's idea of running it down the road. So, what Dan said was sweet to her. <laughs> okay, good. So, it's not, so that's, so not even. It doesn't who's your, us. So who's your, that's not the preferred 
thing for right. him. Okay, good. Okay, and then um, I also brought a drawing of the stellar project at Pass Lake for you guys to take a look at. Oh, yeah, there was so much fun with that. <laughs> And Jeremiah Patrick's here today okay. to answer some questions. Well, is there anyone from the Constellation to start the other day to answer any questions? I'm kind of halfway connected to right now. There's... So my concern, based upon talking to Jeremiah, is they want to cut and remove these sections of the asphalt and then replace it with the new drawings, but they're not going to asphalt it. It's going to be gravel. Where? Yeah. So between when we approved authorizing the payment that I'm going to say Constellation of Stark um, requested for this project. You know, after the rebid happened twice, where did the authorization come from for this plan? That's my question. And I don't know that you know, who's here to answer that. That was drawn up by the um, Troyer group. Uh, Michael Reese would be the, the person that we should probably talk to. But that, that, as I understand, that drawing was kind of the way it was going to be with the restroom facility. Um, well, the date on this drawing is January 13th of, of this year. year. Um, and we never saw it. Yeah, I can't. I, I haven't been part of it. It's conversation that and, you can have with, with my. And I didn't, you know, it was not. I never really, I guess, saw the plans. I know it started before I, I got into this seat, but um, if this was the most recent modification to this plan, you should have known about it before you started you know especially since mostly just because it involves modification to a county road but i mean when it comes to any work on a county property we should know what the plan is before we start working it yeah um yeah, I, I don't even think i have seen the original plans for it i don't think yeah, it was all yeah i think there was an original drawing that uh, was presented when you know, when the first funding was, was asked for. Mm -hmm. You've never seen it, man. We did it for a while and uh, yeah. I never drew this all went. And like, all went through it. Like I said, regardless of, of the original drawing, yeah. at least, you know, the latest revision yeah. should have, or every revision should have yeah, we come, seen this. come through us. Yeah. Um, so we reached out and Hmm. The architect got the blessing of Mary Perrin and Rick Rinsley. Well, that was before this last revision. I, <laughs> okay. All I know is those were the two names that they gave us because I asked who, who approved this, and that was the two names they gave me. Okay. Mary's no Mary. longer part of the, of the group. Rick would be the no, person. this, but I think that was back when they were both at the highway. It wasn't, she no. approved it because she no. was no. part of the constellation. No. It was her because name was thrown in there because she was in the highway. It, it, no, it was no. because they were part of the uh, constellation of start. Oh, Rick was a member, both of them were members of the group. Okay, she no longer is. They don't. They don't actually meet regularly anymore. But Rick would be the person to go back to and talk to. And Mike Reese is the I believe, person from Troyer that uh, drew it up. And get you Mike's contact if you want it. Because yeah, mm -hmm. this 
They're all there, but they just, I don't think they just couldn't come to the meeting to have it either. Well, I think the whole thing needs to be revisited because I heard mm -hmm. that the county's giving them six free loads of stone too, and we're not doing that. I mean, we can't do that. So I think. Was needs, that, yeah, I don't remember that being part of the agreement. Yeah. And he's, the, this whole thing needs to be talked about again. Okay. It's number four in your general note. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know who's going <clears throat> to. Because maybe I need to relook at what we signed, but from my recollection, all we agreed to was an expenditure. We didn't approve any specific plan. Mm -hmm. And we didn't give permission to modify. The county roads in this way. Huh? I agree with that. Oh. Who's on the constellation? I'm starting to. Well, they regularly meet. I don't know. Bob, Bob, did they still on? Stop it over. Jim, you and, and Rick kind of get together and talk to Mike and. Well, I have to even ask him questions, but it's really great. Is it for, uh, I think we'll learn that from the right about three hands. Yeah, we'll 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 so, yeah. But yeah, there were. Yeah. Well, we'll have to look at that again. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. 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 Come here and talk about it, I guess. But I'm not. I was once that project started, I was out of it. Mm -hmm. it really was driven by courtesy by Sean and, and the engineer. She got she didn't want anybody else involved in that. Part of it. <laughs> yeah, before it moves ahead, I mean, somebody's got to come forth and yeah. talk about it. Reasons why it like needs to be like that, or grand. Great, so can you put that on the next agenda? And uh, yeah, well, I'll reach out to them. That'd be September 6th at 5 p.m. So these parts right here, Dan, this is going to be going in on was that 450? Yes, that's 450 East. So that part of the road would be going, and you're going to take the curve to get around there? Yes. Yeah, that definitely can't be stone. No. So that's, you know, because if that's going to be a functioning road, you can't do that. I mean, it'll be perfect. Yeah. And who was it? No, six. Yeah, six is. I know what I'm doing. No. <laughs> You keep saying that. <laughs> keep saying that. Okay. Yeah, and that's part of the bike path as well. Right. <clears throat> Do you think 73s all the way to the bottom is going to be a problem too with vehicles just sitting there with their weight? And so yeah, that's going to be an issue. Right? Yeah, I wasn't going to feel it that way. It's very strange. Yeah, because well, no, that, when, when they were here asking, for you know the modified bid, the funds for the modified bids, it was said to us that all it's going to be is a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Modifying the road is not a part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can just say I'm a resident. I live half a block away. Yeah, I prefer the road to stay like it is. <laughs> Most, you know, most most of the people I've heard from from Bass Lake would prefer the road stay at it as it is and not have yeah. to worry about driving once, on gravel through that intersection. Person, once the, the restroom facility was taken out, the project should have basically been. It's just that there was no other specific project for just the county. Yeah. The thing and, is, what's going on in Knox and North Judson are, you know, those are county people there to yeah. utilize that too. Yeah. Well, and you know, we don't want to give back grant money. We don't. It's better anytime we get 
federal funds to use here. It's better, you know, because it's just an opportunity to use the taxes we've already paid locally. There's an insurance question here that um, we need answered as far as the amount of coverage is. I don't know if you can verify that this would fall within number J there. Um, it, we would have to see a certificate of insurance from United Consulting. And that's what it's asking for because they're the consultant. So we would want to see a certificate of insurance from them. We will get you showing these amounts. Oh, probably. That was so we already have that for the inspections. Okay. So you yeah. have those on file? Sure. Big file. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's standard. Okay. So it shouldn't be an issue. All right. Make a motion to approve this consultant contract with United Consultant. I get all those paper. Mm -hmm. There's a button. Okay. Oh, let me try to get right line. <laughs> Does it have to be blue? Most of these do. Does it have to be blue? Is it? Yeah, probably. Anybody have blue? I think it's awesome. You go over. I didn't think that was a thing anymore. <laughs> that was a thing a decade ago, but. But as soon as we started accepting digital signatures on a lot of things. Okay, that's all we have. Okay, thanks, Steve. Right, Carrie. You have two minutes. No, <laughs> <laughs> works for me. Okay, we've been through a few times. Well, thank you for um, having me this morning on the agenda to present your property and the insurance renewal. Um, the purpose format is like it has been for the past years. So uh, we'll just kind of start and, and go through the tabs just to do a quick review. And then any questions that you have, either now or after you have you know, time to read through this later, please let me know and I can get you more details. Because this is just kind of a snapshot of what's taking place over the past year. Um, so we'll start with um, tab one. And I know Mark went right to tab five. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. I know, it's a quite five even, right? Well, no. You, you, you... <laughs> Your, your presentation gives me time to review the important things. Okay, so first of all, we'll go through just the loss control visits that we did do this year. Um, those were conducted by Mark Ennis, myself, and we did have an attorney um, who came and did our First Amendment audit training, which proved to be uh, useful since they showed up like about a month later in the training. And so, um, a lot of the employees had been through that and knew how to handle that situation. Um, then you can see the different training sessions besides that that we did do um, over the past year. Rachel and I had an email this morning about some upcoming trainings that we're going to try to get scheduled uh, moving forward. And also fall is when we do the snowplow training 
um, with the highway department to get the to get them prepared for winter. Um, especially with the newer drivers, uh, we've had a lot of turnover there, so it's helpful for those drivers to go through those training sessions. Um, then, we, then I list the different loss control, just different things that we consulted on over the past year, provided information on, um, inspections that we've done over the past year, so you can kind of take a look at those. And on the next page is a summary of claims. And I broke that back down by uh, line of business. So our liability claims, any claim that has been closed, I listed that there. If the total amount, if it's open, it shows open and a total of amount next to open and means ongoing. So that isn't where we're capped at. It's just that's where the claim is at currently with cost. The next page is property. We did not have any property claims over the past couple of years, so you only see the one from 2020. And then our automobile claims over the past couple of years. And workers' comp. Is it fair to say that training was negatively impacted in 2020 and 2021? And that may, um, and is there any correlation between that if, if it's the case and uh, it? it Claims increases. Um, it, it could have been. Uh, we, we were light on training during that time frame because of COVID and the shutdown situation. Um, and then other factors, uh, you know, with, with the uh, safety committee. Um, so hopefully we can get back on track now and get some more consistency with those training sessions and, and maybe see some uh, reduction. Yeah. I, I, I mean, do the workers' comp has not been bad? Um, we really only had some minor things in one one major, which was you know yeah. Good. Other than that, the year before was good, and so you know sometimes it's just yeah we definitely want to continue on the, the training. Um, sure. Um, then you can see the experience modification there, and we did list the past five years, so you can yeah. see a history on that. Um, and so um, we took over your account in 2014 or 14. And so as you can see, it's consistently gotten lower. We have some back and forth a little bit. Um, and you're always going to have that based on the claims that come in. So it's always based on a three-year history, not including the current year on the books at the time. Um, so you'll always have a little bit up and down, but it's stayed way, way better. So that's what we want to see is in the range that you're in is a positive factors. So um, then we get to, to uh, tab two, and this is the premium for the property liability overview, just the limits of liability, nothing's changed with those. The property limits increase by 3% each year to keep up with inflation. So that's always going to be bumped up a bit. Is that enough to keep up with inflation? Yes, it should be <laughs> only because we see a range when we do our valuations, we see a range where we want the particular buildings to be within and we work within all of those. Um, and then you also have a blanket amount of insurance, which allows fluctuation of values between properties. So as long as we're within where we where they want us to be, we're good. Um, and get on to the workers' complements. So really, this is just an overview of what you currently have and what's going to be renewing. Um, and there is a premium recap. I can skip this one because we'll get to that tab. Okay. Tab three is your property renewal proposal. And again, take time after the meeting to look through this. This shows each location that we have insured. Your blanket amount of insurance against it's not going to list it per building, it's an over value. But basically, it's just listing all of our premises. But you know, take a moment to look through that. Go to tab four is your workers' comp schedule that shows payrolls in each classification. We base our payrolls off of audit from the previous year. So we'll again always have a little bit of fluctuation because. Payrolls go up, payrolls go down. And so we adjust accordingly after the year is completed. On the, basing it on the previous year is the best way to keep it as up to date as possible. So that's what that section is on. And then we get to tab five, which is the premium. <laughs> 
And as you can see, um, I've listed out 2015 to 2022, so you can see a review. As you're looking at these amounts, remember that um, we have changing exposure. So even though we have differences in premium, exposures are always changing. So from 2015 to now, you know, your property values went up significantly because of the jail, the property across the street, the remodel. So it's not all rate that has caused it to go up its exposure. So that being said, your liability um, has increased a little bit this year. The employment practices, a small amount, your automobile, a bit, your property is up, um, workers' comp is up a little bit. Overall, I feel like the renewal is pretty good. So you're at 469,778. Mm -hmm. On the next page, I did point down why those explanation of premiums. So why uh, premiums did increase where they did. So your employment practices um, is the experience modification on that with the claims that we've seen. Um, auto increases to the claims that we had in 2021. Um, the current year claims have decreased. So this is going to help in the next, next year's factor. Property increase is market driven. It's an increase in property values and an increase in rates due to lots of factors that we all are aware of at this time. And then the workers come on slightly higher modification this year and a slight increase in payroll. And that's all that was. So really not negative at all. Um, section six is the training sessions that are available um, through Bliss McKnight. We invite this to you and Rachel, Rachel and I will be going through this to figure out um, the different video um, uh, trainings that we're going to put into place and then which ones we're going to have to come down and actually do with the staff. So that's it in a nutshell. If you have any questions, um, please let me know. Um, other than that, I just want to be able to get rid of You need that now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Very much. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah. Thank you. As I do very much. And especially. Yeah. That, one, that, that one. one. <laughs> that one. Not, one not, not, not Rachel the Younger. It's <laughs> that one. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, then we got um, Sheriff Doolin. Pam that sent the email. Yeah. All right. Um, we're not asking for more vehicles. Uh, we got approved to purchase Fords. Uh, there's a hang up on the Fords are not being produced now until actually, we don't even have a date when they're going to be produced. So, um, this calendar year is shot for the Fords. So we're asking for permission to. Purchase Dodges that are already on the lot, and they are four hundred and three dollars more per vehicle, which will cover the cost. Basically, where's those Dodges at? Oh, okay. What was the price difference in them? Like four hundred and three dollars. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve Sheriff to obtain these Dodge Drangler pursuits as presented in lieu of the previously approved for explorers. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Do we have uh, Purdue extension? We have one office position that's part time. We want to update the job description. The last update in 2012 when this person was hired. He's going to be retiring at the end of the month, actually. So we wanted to update that to reflect what she's currently doing. And just that some procedures are different now. It's similar to our uh, full time office manager, just some less. The office manager takes care of all the financial, this person is not. So this isn't a change in status, this is just a change in duties, it's still amazing. Yeah. You say that was a new position. It is not a new position. No, we currently have some main position. She retired at the end of the month, and we just we wanted to update. So it hasn't been updated in 10 years. Different procedures. It looks good to me. So pretty much this is motion to accept the I always, I always like to see Henry's descriptions and just add a line. It, all other duties as a sign. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Okay, performs related duties as a sign. Yeah, I tried to always keep okay. it. Yeah. Okay. I'll second your motion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then we have uh, solar ordinance uh, amendment. Take the planning commission. Oh, I'll just switch it. It's been a while. No, it's the time to suspend the rules. But I don't think that I want to do that this time. But not since I've done it so often, I don't remember the details of the rules. So, you can, since they certified the amendment, they had a public hearing on it. It was easy to approve it. I don't think I want to do that. I mean, I just take this as the first reading, uh, mostly because with how um, everything that's gone on last week, I haven't had a full chance to compare this to what was in the legislation that passed last session, as far as the state goes, as far as their. I guess they're calling them standards. Read this into the exactly just sent out. This is yeah. last week. Uh, oh, stupid question for you. Maybe I've not seen it come through. Did we change or do we consider the verbiage of going from a road use affidavit to a road use agreement? Is that built into these changes? And I I only ask you because I know that you helped serve the tech committee, but what what where did that stand? Did you, Remember, uh, man, the things that were these affidavit because that was was a close within the solar ordinance at the time. The next era said they wanted to do an agreement because it included things like you know the site survey along the road rather than just the affidavit, which is kind of base level. Where and maybe those would help you with this. Do you guys have any discussions about that in terms of like codifying that into the ordinance, or do we still want to stick with the road use affidavit? They think for a reason where we wanted to, we did put it in there that they got a gift. Mm -hmm. kind of good, but they did wrote agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that was my only question. I'm not sure. Yeah. I just kind of modified everything. 
couple million and talking about how to make it more user friendly. That was one. I was, you guys know, it's one of us to put the merger in that way. So, so to make your guys' life easier rather than put that in like an economic development agreement like we did with man you know, we were right. Yeah, I looked at this last week. The only question I had, and you guys probably believe that concern was the planning commission was the final stop for kind of last week. And I think Charlie, you had said that you're okay with the as design. I think my only question, not a concern, was you know, on page three at the end of yeah. Said uh, ground cover specification reviewed and approved by the Stark County Planning Commission board was fine, but if you wanted to be the final stop for approval since their advisory board, I just made mention of that. And Charlie, you said you had no concern that the Planning Commission seemed to be the ones that review things more thoroughly. You guys did. I so, think that's what they were wanting to achieve was to review it. And yeah, yeah. And all the, I want to say the last say and then. Yeah, that was the only question you might have. If you guys want to be fine, because yes, you got a C dash five point two. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We were talking about section F on page three, the red at the end of the. We we're talking about the vegetated, vegetated ground cover. I was saying when you guys sent this to us last week, the only questions I had for the commissioner on the commissioners on that is whether or not they wanted the planning commission to be the final stop for approval on ground cover, whether they wanted that to go to the commissioners. For approval, and Charlie had said he has no problem with the planning commission being final approval on ground cover. Because I think that was like one of your, I mean, in your job or part of your job was to, you know, have the final approval. Now it went back to that board instead. Isn't that kind of how it's set up now? That the planning commission is the final stop for ground it's cover. Set up. You never want it all on your yeah, shoulder. That, yeah, that was that was what was said to me is like there was some concern that we were going to wind up putting too much just on you yeah. and be the decision maker and and some of that should go back to the planning commission to be well the ground cover the way I, I think it, it goes through the rule five which is not all rule five but they gotta they gotta get that from it before they can get our sure and a lot of the ground cover is going to be like Purdue. And um, all the other and I, and I, and I see that. Yeah. So, so basically, kind of refined it so that they, they have to submit a landscape plan anyway, and it has to meet certain requirements of either Purdue or NRCS. And then it comes to the plan commission to review that that landscape plan and, and, and those cover requirements. So. I wouldn't see why the commissioners would want to get out of it. I'll try to take you guys out of all that. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not a thing I have a problem yeah. delegating to the planning commission yeah. at all. No, no I mean, as long I, I didn't say it was concerned, I just wanted to point out right. to you in case you wanted to be the final stop. But no, I think it should be appreciated. Let up to them more because I mean, they're feeling like it. So. Yeah, yeah, but it's so basically they're hiring an engineer. Look at that. So I'm looking at that. You have your engineer looking at that. Yeah, I didn't see anything else up here that was a concern. I mean, I know you want time to look at it a little bit. Ooh, that was the only thing that I had much to say. This is the first reading. Is there any specific action? Well, just, just a vote on the first reading. You guys want to vote to approve the first reading? Make motion to approve the first reading of the solar energy ordinance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Taylor. I agree. So we don't have to send the evening. We're starting to the actual procedure because we took a minute. So. A motion to approve the payroll claims in the amount of two hundred seventy-six thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars and ninety-eight cents. So we need a second vote in favor. Of the night.
your motion to approve the vendor claims in the amount of two hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred seven dollars eighty-one cents. So moved. All in favor? Aye. The motion to approve the minutes for Monday, August 1st, 2022. Second. All those in Uh, and then we have uh, map data application WTH. Yes, CoreLogic wants to retain some of our data on WTH GIS and we can do that, but if they have to pay us for it and we pay WTH for it. Who should it? Just winds up being a pass through. Okay. Seven hundred fifty million. It's not even 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 it's not Then we have a uh, request for annex keys, uh, Tracy Williams and Mary B. I make a motion to approve the issuance of keys to those two individuals. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You should sign this right. Oh. Okay. I signed at the bottom. <laughs> well, then we have to uh, change date and time of uh, the over meetings. So, well, or so. it, I have your second meeting in October. Yeah. I accidentally scheduled the tax sale during that time. So, sorry. You're wrong. I know. Let me see. Did you have a day to that? Well, this is what we did. I think we were. I was going to make the suggestion we just we cancel that meeting yeah. for now. And unless there's a bunch of stuff, yeah, unless, we'll, unless necessary, you know, we'll, we'll advertise as needed. But uh, for now, we can just cancel that meeting because in conflict, conflict with the. Next. Okay. That's the first meeting. Second. 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 Yeah. October 17th. 10 a.m. is the tax sale. I wasn't thinking when I made it. 
That was a good thing on the agenda. Do you have anything else for me? No. You want to talk about the thing you sent me about um, Veterans Day? Oh, Veterans Day. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I believe I emailed all you guys um, along with uh, the state on Veterans Day during the month of November for a week. Uh, they are placing green lights everywhere in support of our veterans, and I would like to see our county follow suit and make all of our white lights or yellow lights green for our veterans for that week, please. Which is that all? Exterior, I would like all county buildings, yes. All, all county exterior buildings, white whatever. lights? Yeah, that's what I would like. But you guys, of course, yeah. make that choice, but that's what I would like to see. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like someone to get with Jim to yeah. find out how much that work, how much work that would be for him before. They ain't opposed to doing it, it's just there might be a special ball for something. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there's one there's one where get some, we could get some. Green saran wrap around some if necessary. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, would, that might be a little, a little tech. Yeah. Here. There he is. They do make the film though to go over the lenses of the lights to change the colors of the lights. That which be. <laughs> <You're trouble. laughs> yeah. That was two in a row. <laughs> so Oh, oh, well, um, and that's making the suggestion that we participate in a, um, I guess I'll, I'll call it a Veterans Appreciation event um, in November around Veterans Day. Um, in turn, the all the exterior white lights on um, the county buildings to green. How much? And my question was, just how much work would that be for you? As, Are those bulbs special, or I mean, is there a lot of anything to it? I can find it different bulbs. I'm not. Yeah, I have to get a price on because I mean, it's something we if once we got them, we do it every yeah. year, right? So can you get a price on them by their next meeting, three weeks in? Okay, because right, we're talking all three buildings. Yeah, all the exterior mm -hmm. lighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just on the buildings, yes. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. That's it. I'll have another question for you after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got anything else for us, Justin? No, I'm saying during Carrie's section, I appreciate the job that Carrie always does when it comes to our um, uh, tort claims notices. If I mean, if, if that's what I that, that'd be a full time job for me, that's all I would do. So it seems like whenever one of our officers looks at somebody the wrong way, somebody files a tort claim mm -hmm. notice. So Carrie always gets that to the attorneys they hire, and it's, it's seamless. And I get I get updates, status updates on it. So I mean, again, that'd be the only thing that I'd have time to do with that. So. Appreciate the job you guys do to get it to the right people. That that's not me. <laughs> Thank you. We're happy to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Wish it didn't happen. Part of what we do. Yeah. Um, I want you guys to be thinking about can we have an employee appreciation event in December again? I'm okay. going to get with Port to see what Friday would work better for them, and maybe we can approve something next meeting. That's fine. Anyone else have anything for us? Um, Mark, uh, guys, I'm not sure if you guys want to approve this. You approved um, an appropriation request at the last meeting. We've since parted down from that, actually, and we'll be bringing it back to the council this afternoon. So I didn't know if you wanted to say yeah, I, I told her, she had asked me, and I told her since it's less than we approved, yeah. we don't have to formally That's approve the council. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they might, they might rip me apart, but you know. <laughs> so I don't know if y'all three want to sign or just one. And Rachel, do you just want to hang on to it for yeah. the meeting later? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is anyone else on this? I guess we have a motion on the So moved. Thank you all.